Here is a two-dimensional array of the orthorhombic primitive lattice. Recall that for cubic, we had A equals B equals C. For tetragonal, we had A equals B not equal to C. And for orthorhombic, we have A not equal to B not equal to C. But for cubic, tetragonal, and orthorhombic, alpha equals beta equals gamma equals 90 degrees. So the angles stay the same, but we uh, change the lengths of A, B, and C. Here is another two-dimensional array of the orthorhombic primitive lattice. and now a three-dimensional array. Orthorhombic primitive has one atom per unit cell. This is the end-centered orthorhombic lattice. Like the primitive, it has one atom at each of the eight vertices, but it also has one atom each on two opposite faces. So it's something like a face-centered lattice, except that rather than being on all six faces, it's only on one set of opposite faces. Here we can see the face on which the uh, end centered atom is going to be, and there's also one on the opposite face. Here we have a more three dimensional arrangement which shows more clearly the positions of the base centered atoms in the lattice. Here we have the face-centered orthorhombic. Not only do we have the eight atoms, one each at each vertex, and face atoms on two opposite sides, we have it on all six sides for the orthorhombic face-centered lattice. So here we can see it in a two-dimensional array. Just like the face-centered cubic, this Lattice has four atoms per unit cell. Here we have a more three-dimensional arrangement of the orthorhombic face-centered lattices. Here we have a two-dimensional array of the body-centered orthorhombic lattice. Body-centered orthorhombic has two atoms per unit cell. Here we have a more three-dimensional array of the body-centered orthorhombic lattice. Here we have the monoclinic 
primitive lattice. Here, A is not equal to B, is not equal to C, and we have that alpha and beta are both 90 degrees, but gamma is not equal to 90 degrees. So we can kind of think of monoclinic primitive as being like orthorhombic, but if we change one of the 90 degree angles to a non-right angle. In the monoclinic primitive, again we have, like all primitive lattices, we have exactly one atom per unit cell. Here we can see a more three-dimensional array of the monoclinic primitive lattice. Here we have a slightly different perspective on a two-dimensional array of eight monoclinic primitive unit cells. Then, from that same perspective, here we have a three-dimensional array of the monoclinic primitive lattice. A second form of the monoclinic crystal class is the end-centered monoclinic. So here we also, in addition to having one atom at each of the eight vertices, we have two atoms on opposite faces. Here we have a more three-dimensional array of the monoclinic end-centered lattice. 